For thousands of years, we humans have been asking ourselves, what happens after death? The ancient Egyptians believed they had the answer. Once mummified, they would embark on a long and dangerous journey to an everlasting paradise. But to get there, they needed a guide with magic spells. The Book of the Dead. To the ancient Egyptians, death marked the end of one journey and the beginning of another. After death, all ancient Egyptians believed that they must leave behind the green, fertile farmlands of Egypt and the waters of the River Nile to travel to the afterlife. They hoped that the afterlife would be a perfect place that resembled the beautiful landscape of the Egypt they had left behind. It was called the Field of Reeds. But to reach the afterlife, they had to make a dangerous and frightening journey. Their spirit had to cross the netherworld, which was the land of the dead, ruled by the god Osiris. Hail to you, Osiris. Turn your face to the west, that you may illumine the two lands with fine gold. Those who were asleep stand up to look at you, for to you belong eternity and everlasting. The ancient Egyptians believed that it was very important to prepare for this journey. How would they ward off hostile spirits and poisonous snakes? How would they avoid burning fire and scalding water? And why did the monstrous devourer always look so hungry? When wealthy ancient Egyptians died, their bodies were mummified. The mummy was placed in a tomb with special objects to protect it and to help the dead face the perils of the netherworld. One of the objects was a roll of magic spells and pictures. This is now known as the Book of the Dead. The mummy stayed in the tomb, but its bar spirit, in the shape of a bird, could fly away from the tomb to explore the netherworld and to try and find a way through. In order to do this, the spirit of the dead person would have to pass through gates that were guarded by the gods and avoid being caught in their nets. They would have to battle with snakes and crocodiles and protect themselves against bloodthirsty monsters. The dead person used magic and spells from the Book of the Dead to help them overcome these obstacles. Oh, you with a spine who would work your mouth against this magic of mine. No crocodile which lives by magic shall take it away. And at the end of each day, the bar spirit returned to the mummy in the tomb. The final and most important stage in the journey of the dead was the trial in the Hall of Judgment. The dead person's heart was weighed against the feather of truth. If their heart proved too heavy, they would be condemned and eaten by the monstrous devourer. If their heart balanced on the scales, the dead person would be allowed to enter and to remain forever in a perfect world, traveling across the skies with the sun god Ra, or tending their crops in a perfect landscape that resembled the green fertile banks of their beloved River Nile. Are you prepared to make the same journey? Can you discover how to use the spells of the Book of the Dead to help you on your way? It's time now to go into the exhibition and meet the god Osiris and the monstrous devourer. 
The 42 Divine Principles of the Net Jamaat 1. I have not committed sin. 2. I have not committed robbery with violence. 3. I have not stolen. 4. I have not slain men or women. 5. I have not stolen food. 6. I have not swindled our Netja's offerings or tributes. 7. I have not stolen from the Netja's. 8. I have not told lies. 9. I have not carried away food. 10. I have not cursed. 11. I have not closed my ears to truth. 12. I have not committed adultery. 13. I have not made anyone cry. 14. I have not felt sorrow without reason. 15. I have not assaulted anyone. 16. I am not deceitful. 17. I have not stolen anyone's land. 18. I have not been an eavesdropper. 19. I have not falsely accused anyone. 20. I have not been angry without reason. 21. I have not seduced anyone's wife. 22. I have not polluted myself. 23. I have not terrorized anyone. 24. I have not disobeyed the law. 25. I have not been exclusively angry. 26. I have not cursed our natures. 27. I have not behaved with violence. 28. I have not caused disruption of peace. 29. I have not acted hastily or without thought. 30. I have not overstepped my boundaries of concern. 31. I have not exaggerated my words when speaking. 32. I have not worked evil. 33. I have not used evil thoughts, words, or deeds. 34. I have not polluted the water or environment. 35. I have not spoken angrily or arrogantly. 36. I have not cursed anyone in thought, word, or deeds. 37. I have not placed myself on a pedestal. 38. I have not stolen what belongs to the Netjas. 39. I have not stolen from or disrespected the deceased. 40. I have not taken food from a child. 41. I have not acted with insolence. 42. I have not destroyed property belonging to Netjas. This pharaonic looking thing here is not the Ark of the Covenant, because the Greek originated word Ark refers to what's inside and not this pharaonic box itself. The two winged girlies you see here on the box spreading their wings in the typically protective way of Ma'at, the goddess of justice. Therefore the word Ma'at, Ma'at, magistrate. Magistrate, therefore the law and its ten commandments to abide by. If not, Ma'at, you get it mate, Ma'at. But most importantly, she was the goddess of order, order and obedience to our masters, the pharaohs. Order in the empire, so the masters could tend their businesses without losing too much energy on those slaves, totally unworthy of too much attention anyway. Here you can see the 42 principles or 42 ideals of Ma'at written 2000 years before Moses in the Bible, including the Ten Commandments too. These were the 42 articles of Pharaoh's law to keep the slaves quiet, work and shut up, just as today and still the same ones ruling. You can see number three, I have not stolen. Number eight, I have not spoken lies. Number 32, I have not done neither harm nor ill etc. All Ten Commandments are there, where the Ten Commandments are in fact a lousy copy of Pharaoh's laws of Ma'at. The Ark of the Covenant is not from God, but it was from Pharaoh to farm his Jewish slaves. 
by Moses the Pharaoh handing out the ten rules to abide by all in favor of the elite and ruling class who kill us by the millions but we their slaves are not allowed to retaliate rule number six thou shalt not kill they are pharaonic masters of the aristocracy and their masons rape and sacrifice our children and they just laugh about rule number seven no adultery our master steal all from us but the invisible all-seeing eye in the sky will see it all when some robin hood would get some of it back rule number eight thou shalt not steal the nazi swiss and the authorities massively lie things together in a highly organized way to incriminate immigrants so the swiss can bury the immigrants under massive amounts of prison years rule number nine thou shalt not bear false witness on your neighbor a eh, swiss eh? so all these ten pharaonic rules called moses commandments and covenant with god the all-seeing eye are laughed about by our masters and brushed away being just a clever means to farm the slave race called humanity so there's no reason at all to lift yourself up in some hysterical religious ecstasy hearing the word ark of the covenant in some steven spielberg series for the slaves and by the initiated the jews too should stop this arrogance claiming the ark as their heritage which it isn't and never was either but i suppose that many good zionists have woken up to the fact that moses took the erev rav pharaoh's wizards with him who became the rabbis forcing Pharaoh's ten laws of rulership upon the people, circumcising the slaves as Pharaoh only circumcised their slaves and never themselves for reasons explained in my older film here. And look at how they, how they, they have, the homos have to hold their hands here, you know. It's not, it's not out of free will, you know, they're doing it. You can see that here. So that's why because you know people didn't want this yeah so they started doing it like with a baby yeah a baby can't defend himself right right and you know if you believe in god's creation you don't you do not mutilate it eh? like the homos do here that, that's why we all got all these homos nowadays it's all from pharaoh and the aristocracy you can see it here Pharaoh's Erev Rav and their rabbis of the Judenrat, Jewish Council, deliberately led the Jews into the concentration camps by means of deception, saying that Hitler was a civilized man who would never hurt a Jewish child, and that some god would protect them anyway. And here you can see how on June 26th, 1942 these jews from pharaoh's erev rav working for and with the nazis even hang some polish resistance fighters this is the enemy within and their base switzerland here you can see the very moment on the hill with pharaoh moses when pharaoh said this is my chosen people who will carry my ten rules of enslavement among all peoples globally through the diaspora that's why it says in the holy books that on that very occasion pharaoh and his army of erev rav disappeared in the sea meaning that the pharisees or pharaoh's aristocracy disappeared in the sea of peoples the global invisible enemy within and their Freemason lodges full of pharaonic symbology. Until Pharaoh's Roman legions, spreading the word and their ten rules of enslavement, stumbled upon the Germanic tribes and got a thorough spanking. 
and their political elite of Faro are literally begging for some good old Germanic spanking again today. In the Bible, they have another word for the Erev Rav, the Pharisees. And the Pharisees means the descendants of Pharaoh and his nobility, who sentenced Jesus to die on the cross, executed by the Romans. No Jew is guilty of killing Jesus. Now let's analyze the word, the word Ark of the Covenant. The word covenant refers to the alliance, or rather the obedience to Pharaoh, Pharaoh God on earth. The word ark comes from the Greek archain, meaning to rule, as in the word monarch for a king or Pharaoh. Monos means alone, and archain to rule, as a king Pharaoh in a feudal system of the Red House Old World Order vertical rule. Therefore, also Noah's Ark, which is not a boat, but a law, as in the Ark of the Covenant. But do you think the Covenant was a real bloody boat? There never was a bloody boat either. It's just a reference to the Horus Matrix concerning the selection of useful slaves for Pharaoh, or as some call him, Anunnaki, and to have all the bad slaves killed as we are a farmed race. They are just breathing us and breathing us out as they did with those annoying dangerous Germanic tribes in order to replace them starting right in 1945 after the big dying. Like killing the dolphins like on like an Auschwitz on the beaches of France full of sacrificed dolphins escaping the 5G noise of the water, climbing on a beach out of the noisy water. Thus, coming back to the boat, the ark and the water again, and Noah's ark sort of meaning that we're all in the same boat, smartly pushed down by Pharaoh's ten rules, by the so-called invisible realm of the all-seeing eye. The word monarch is also French, the language of the aristocracy par excellence, mon arc, meaning my law, in those days enforced by the bow. In French, arc, same word. Or like Jean d'Arc, Joan of Arc, meaning Joan of the law. And she was not a saint either. You know, her first general was a um, Gilles de Ré. He was a pedophile and a, a satanist serial killer and god there was no god that say that said like uh, joan you know there's something wrong she's not a saint it's all the same story here it says god's warrior it's all the same thing like with moses ark of the covenant joan of ark noah's ark uh, monarch macron it's all the same bloody pharaonic lies with an invisible powers, you know, saving us and come on. That's also why MKUltra brainwashing method, also called Monarch, Monarch, as in MK for shoving the ten laws of Pharaoh up your brain. Monarch, Monarch. MKUltra Monarch is just a modern version of the same old religious hocus-pocus brainwash as Ark of the Covenant, Noah's Ark, Joan of Ark, Mon Ark, Anagram Pro Macron. How do I know all this? Or maybe I'll tell you one day. And here again, Ark, here it says, Les Enfants Arc-en-Ciel meaning the rainbow children in English of the indigo generation because arc the law arc en ciel a rainbow rounded as a bow same word arc as in a dome being referred to in the umbrella corporation for protection with the red templar's cross from the hollywood film resident evil and an umbrella looks like a dome and for protection doesn't it 
It's just a chess game to them. And we are the pawns, the slaves. And this pawn here, it's the queen actually. That's Isis, yeah, with a Templar's V here. It stands, normally it stands on a checkerboard configuration as in a Freemason lodge. And the Freemasons, they come out of these here, the Templars. And that's why this piece here of the chess game, while it's standing on a Templars cross with a Templars V. In just a Hollywood film, eh, you might think, right? Some people even believe that the Ark of the Covenant is hidden here. A eh, Swissy. Now you see it looks like a Swiss cross, eh? Evil pharaohs with their unilateral ten laws for farming their slaves are destroying the entire earth right now. So if there would be a genuine God left in this hell, he would say, retaliate now, immediately, and save what's left. No bloody creator would order his only hope to turn the other cheek and see the entire creation go to hell as right now. And remember that the historical Jesus was from the royal pharaonic aristocratic house of King David, which the Bible says so. This was Pharaoh's only son of Pharaoh God on earth who died for his love for man. He loved the slaves and tried to help them against the Pharisees, descendants of Pharaoh, and he was standing in the way of his father, Pharaoh's plans to farm the slaves and have them fight each other in numerous wars. So Pharaoh, the father, had him die for his love of man, just as other Pharisees like Lady Di or John F. Kennedy. So all slaves and all tribes unite now and save what's left now. This is what Jesus wanted. All people unite and then retaliate altogether for the love of saving this creation.